Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the September 9th edition of the Locking Your Success Trade and Market Updates. We had uh, some uh, pretty aggressive up moves in the markets last week, which uh, are giving us a bit of trouble, primarily on our September M3 trade, and we'll discuss that as we get going. But for now, i just likely uh, like to quickly mention or talk about this think or swim issue that we are continuing to have. It is getting a little bit better. However, we are still uh, showing when the market's open, open a fairly significant difference between think or swim and option view. I have had some comments from some people uh, letting me know that they're, they're uh, actually been trading iron butterflies in this, which you can do if you are uh, portfolio margined or if you're not portfolio margined and you just have a lot of extra money in your account to deal with the extra margin that you're going to create when you put a call vertical and cross out the short strike in your uh, butterfly. That will cause a significant margin increase. Uh, if you have the money to deal with that, that's fine. You can do irons and put call verticals or put verticals in your iron butterfly. That is certainly one way that you you can do this if your portfolio margined. If you're not and you're running a tight account, you're kind of kind of have to do it with put butterflies. However, you could always analyze iron butterflies, even though you're buying put butterflies. So you know if you wanted to do that, here if you look down here, here is our position showing put butterflies with call verticals. And if I just delete this and I come in here, I've rebuilt the position doing uh, iron butterflies. So this is the exact same position. Instead of paying, oh, let's see, I would have paid um, $13.15 for this butterfly. If I'm doing an iron, I'm going to get $36.85 credit because a 50-point wing butterfly is worth $50. $50 minus $13.15 equals $36.85. And I can just come in here and build this with iron butterflies, even though I'm running put butterflies. And I can still pretty, I can create the exact same position. And I actually get different Greeks, which I shouldn't, which shouldn't happen, right? We should get the same Greeks. The only issue with this. Uh, at least after market, right now the Greeks are actually worse off with a iron butterfly than they are with the put butterflies. So if I come in to here and look at this M3 position in option view using uh, standard call butterflies, I currently have a delta of minus 69.74. If I go into think or swim using my iron butterflies, I have minus 29. If I come in here and look at my put butterflies, which is my standard position, I have minus delta, uh, delta of minus 47.75. So, like I said, I've had some people telling me that the iron butterflies act more like uh, option view. I have not checked it when the market's open. These are aftermarket, um, but I've had three people tell me this now, and. I've only checked aftermarket. Every time I check aftermarket, the put butterflies are actually closer to reality uh, on thinkorswim than the irons are. However, uh, what I would like to do is, if anybody is trading put butterflies or has option view and thinkorswim, and would like to you know, do a little experiment, put your position in as iron butterflies. Check that against uh, option view. See what uh, see what we get for for readings. If um, if you're finding you you're getting good readings, let me know. Or if you're getting bad readings, let me know, and I will just get that word out to everybody. Like I said, I've had three people who said that the iron butterflies are currently registering closer, which makes sense. It would uh, you know at least take your short strikes and average your call put skews out because you have one short put, one short call. But aftermarket hours, I don't see it. Now that I have my position in, by the way, I am going to track this myself with my position and see if the iron butterflies and think or swim are any closer. I really hope they are because that would be a great help to a lot of people who are trading small and don't really have, aren't producing the extra income from their trading to go ahead and buy an option view system. So uh, that would certainly help.
But again, so far I haven't seen it. As a matter of fact, it looks even worse. Uh, you know, just <laughs> this is just more confirmation that the thinker swim is off. I also came in here and put my uh, position option view as a iron butterfly. So this is the opposite. So this is with the put butterflies. And this position with an iron butterfly is going to be right here. Right? A minus 70 delta. It's almost identical to my put butterflies. If I come back to my put butterflies, I'm 69 point something. Actually, it's 70.09 now. It's kind of shifting around um, a little bit, but uh, yeah, so we're right about minus 70. Whether you use iron butterflies or call butterflies, and you know, just in case you want to come in here and uh, use an iron butterfly with put uh, spreads, put verticals, instead of the call verticals, that's another uh, thing that you could do. Here's an iron with put verticals. Again, delta is exactly minus 70. So no matter what I put in here, these Greeks are acting very, very consistent. And again, I believe these to be accurate. And with think or swim, with the irons, we're getting you know minus. I'm sorry, with the puts, we're getting minus 47. With the irons, we're getting minus 24. Both of which I think are incorrect. Or should I say they're being cal they're probably being calcul they're being calculated the way they've always been calculated in think or swim. However, they're not taking certain skews and uh, other market conditions into effect when they calculate them where option view is. Therefore, we're getting, you know, uh, our Greeks are all over the place with this platform right now. All right, enough on that. Let's take a look at the markets. Here we have the Russell 2000. We, uh, the, I redrew this trend channel. And our question is, well, where, how high is this going to go? I believe that this would be an accurate representation of the upper trend channel. Yes, we did poke through it once, but in general, we have a hit here. We have a hit here. We have almost a hit here, and now we're up here again. So this looks to be a fairly accurate representation. That implies that we're kind of topped off. The other thing that implies that we're getting close is we had this, I think we remember talking about this head and shoulders pattern forming. It was uh, last week, and I said if this confirms, and you know, we had a, a downside target. But I also said at the time that I was bullish, and I thought that this pattern was going to fail. And when we have a head and shoulders pattern that fails like this, we're typically going to have a very aggressive up move. And where do we have an up move to? Well, when we do when we do price patterns like this, we're going to measure from our neckline, which is at right around 800. And we're going to measure to the top of uh, of our pattern. Now this pattern here is a little subjective because we have quite a tail in the candle. So you could either call it here or you could call it the top of the tail. So if I go here at around 800 and I hit the very top of the tail, let's see the top of the tail's at hmm, the high is 827. So that would be about that would be 27 points to the top of the tail, or about 20 points to the bottom of the tail. So when I set my price pattern target, my price pattern target is going to be somewhere between 20 and 27 points over the top of my right shoulder. Now the top of my right shoulder just happens to be at exactly uh, 819.59, let's call it 820. Uh, 20 to 27 points would be 840 to 847 also coincides with pretty much the tops of this over here. The top over here, the high was 846.31. So that automatically, the day this breaks, which is here, the morning this broke, we should have had a price target of around 840 to 847, which we uh, have hit. So in my opinion, we've more or less reached that price target. We may push a little bit higher. We're pushing into the top of this channel. We're pushing into higher resistance here. So I believe Russell may may try and uh, creep up a little bit higher, but it's going to roll over and come back and probably retest this 820 level. Again, that's if I'm looking at the index by itself. If this is to happen, we are positioned fairly well in RM3 trade. 
to take advantage of that and if it does that sometime in the middle of the week and I don't have to make any more up adjustments then we should be looking pretty good if it just continues to go sideways and continues to grind up this trend line which is certainly possible then um, no, it's going to have a little bit harder time this month but uh, as of right now everything looks good again I am bullish uh, overall on the markets and I do believe we're going to come back and retest this area somewhere and continue higher probably hitting new all-time highs uh, in October and let's go back to and take a look at the SPX this here if you remember I've had this price target set on from a previous pattern on the S&P I do not believe it's going straight there uh, as I said last week I believe we're going to make one more cycle so we're coming up we'll probably make another cycle sideways or down and then take another shot up probably probably not this week probably in a couple of weeks I'd say uh, and possibly even in October and reach this level up here at around uh, 1460 at around 1460. Again, this is very similar to the Russell. We're at the top of our trend channel. I'd expect a rollover, maybe a retest down in here, and then the, and then probably continue higher. It is possible we get a breakout and a run for this area, but um, time will tell on that. I think the most likely thing is we uh, we <laughs> probably do this this here, run sideways a little bit, uh, or slightly uh, following this trend line. Preferably, we pull back we'll see how it goes. Looking at the NDX, we had a clear trend line breakout, we had a trend line retest, we had a continued up move, which also forced a breakout, I should probably move this a little bit, that's not positioned well, forced a breakout of this area here, which would probably be more accurate. This is very bullish uh, in general to the upside, However, I would expect a retest of this area here. It may even fall down through a little bit, come fishing for the 20-day moving average again. But uh, this is this is a bullish pattern. That's all I can say. We're, we're still very bullish in the markets. I would expect maybe some, like I said, some sideways consolidation or a small pullback, but nothing uh, nothing too drastic. And for the Dow, the Dow still has a little more to go to hit its uh, actual upper side of this channel. But we are at previous highs, so we're at uh, horizontal resistance. Like it'll roll over, come back down to here, and blast higher. So there we go. We are bullish on the markets with a short term pullback uh, expected. Let's take a look at our positions. Here is, again, M3 for September. I got caught up in the incorrect delta numbers think or swim not as much as some people but more than I probably should have I do did know the numbers were different I didn't know the extent to which they were different when we started I started on August 15th I believe this day here but I also started earlier in the day which means the price was down at the a little over 790 so we started way back here with the 770 butterflies right at the bottom of this recent trend which wasn't the best timing in the world, but it was probably better timing than some of the guys who could in down there. Also, positive enough, I was too negative delta going in because I wasn't uh, paying attention to the option view Greeks. And I ended up getting down, I think, close to $1,000 up in here. Whoops. Up in here on the trade. Which, if I go back and retest it using the proper numbers, uh, I would have been not down a thousand dollars I would have been uh, pretty much break even with this run would have been up money here and I would have been about uh, break even here because I got down right off the gate I'm still sitting down about a thousand dollars right now on that position so we're up here eh, everything's fine here we have the position I'm going to show you option view this is actually the correct profit and loss as far as I know. I think it's it, it's it's actually down about a thousand dollars. But that it would be the correct profit and loss on the position. My option view position, I'm not putting the exact prices of my adjustments and stuff in. So that's when I show it, this trade to you in option view, you gotta remember I'm about four hundred dollars better off than it shows me. Uh last week 
with the very big up move. Let me go back into the account so I remember what I did with this. This is my M3 dedicated account. So um, let's go into here. The week started on the second. So what I did here is, you know, as as uh, our delta started climbing, I put in a 810, an 800, 810 call vertical. We went to the next day, and I needed to do more verticals. If you remember right, I told you this account is a little bit undercapitalized. I have a position with a planned capital of uh, fifty thousand dollars. I had thirty something thousand dollars in it, so most of the time I can get away with that. In other words, a lot of times you can plan a little more. You can push the limits of your account with the M3 trade because you usually don't uh, get up to full capital. The issue here is, well, we're having a really tough month, and in a really tough month, that's why we plan the capital because sometimes it's needed. This is one of those cases. So I was running short uh, on money on the 6th to do the adjustments I wanted to do. So I came in here and I sold my two 750 Russell calls that I had. I bought 290, uh, two 790 Russell calls and that pulled uh, $3,800 out of the position, $3,860 out. And that gave me the money to come in here and sell these three of these 770 put butterflies and buy um, I ended up buying two 810 put butterflies I bought them one at a time I bought one for $18 one for $17.90 and I also had to come in here and buy two 800 820 call verticals and two 810 820 call verticals so that was the move on the 6th, which I believe was Wednesday. Let me check and see. The 6th was Thursday. Okay, I'm sorry, the 6th was Thursday. That was the big up day. That was a big up day. So that was the move on the big up day. And uh, obviously we went further up on Friday and I needed some more correction of the position. So I came in here and I bought another 810 put butterfly and I sold one, I'm sorry, two of the 770 put butterflies and one of the 790 put butterflies. And that puts me in a current position of, I have four 790 put butterflies. I have three 810 put butterflies. Let me go into the, um, here again. So if I have three, I have three eight ten put butterflies. I have two, I have four seven nineties, three eight ten. So I'm down from ten to seven butterflies. I cut my butterfly size back. I also have it's easier to see an option view. Uh, I, I, so these calls here, we have the seven twelve seven ninety calls. Two of them are the hedge against the butterflies. Six of them belong to a seven ninety eight hundred call vertical. And four of them belong to a 790820 call vertical. And that puts us again in this position here. We are down, it's showing down more than I believe that I am. And here's our graph. If we do end up getting that pullback, which I would thinking should happen, down at the 820 level, this is our Monday estimated T plus zero line if we can come in and clear this much over fifteen sixteen hundred dollars I'll probably just exit it at a very small profit for the month and move on that would be my opportunity we're getting close to expiration I don't want to fight a big uh, upper move or down move at this time if it doesn't happen we're going to continue the good fight here and eventually uh, roll on top of this or pick up our expiration line to the point where we can't lose any more money and hold it and see what happens. But that's the, the plan going forward with this. So this is the position. Again, four 790 butterflies, three 810 butterflies, 12 um, calls, two of which are part of uh, the hedge, six of which are part of this vertical here, and four of which are this four vertical up here. Take a look at our October bearish butterfly. And here it is. And I actually really like the positioning of this. 
if we do get a decent pull down, we'll be looking really nicely. We are have some pretty good resistance up here at 860. Not likely we're going to pass too much through that. I feel that we can hold this probably as long as the move is fairly reasonable. I could probably hold this to 880. I don't think we're going that high. And we will be vulnerable to a whipsaw if we do get up there, though. So the worst thing that could happen to us at this point is we were forced into the 840, 860, 880 butterfly and then have the market come down, uh, which is actually not a very unlikely scenario. It's, it's very possible that could happen. Uh, I think we're going to go down first and then up, though, and we should be able to handle that pretty easily. As of right now, we're sitting at 810 and 830 butterflies. We are, uh, if you look here, we're okay delta theta wise, but we'll take a look on option view. If you look on option view, we are more or less at a delta theta uh, problem, which would imply that we take this 810 up to 850 and we'd be in an 830, 850. I'm trying not to do that. We didn't really exceed one and a half to one, or maybe we touched past it a couple times during the day. When we decisively exceed one and a half to one, uh, I will take and roll this. But as of right now, that hasn't happened. I actually like this position better than the rolled position, so I'm going to try and hang here a little bit if we can. But if we're if it, if we're decisively over one and a half to one, and we're still over 840 on our um, price of the Russell, I will end up rolling this 810 to 850. But as of right now, this is the position. I'll show you this position in option view. That's right here. We have our 810 and our 850 um, put butterflies. This one's on, um, this one's showing 10 contracts. It's, it's, so it's obviously bigger. But um, it's the same thing. So we're going to have the same delta theta ratio. And right now we are looking at, um, you know, one and a half to one would put us, no, technically after hours we're over it. When I checked it when the market was open, we were not over it. So, you know, basically what that means is if the market continues up, then I am going to up past 850. I'm not going to add at 850. Instead, I'm going to roll to 850 and then I'm going to add at 870. So and I'll put myself right in the middle of the graph. If, uh, if we do get that move, if we don't get that move, and we continue up and we hang around eight, uh, eight, over 845, I'll probably just make the roll until, and wait till we get over 850 and then um, force myself into an 870. But like I said, as of right now, if we don't go any higher, I do like this positioning. Very likely we come back into here and be able to get a, uh, a profit for the month. So, so it's looking good. As I said, we are still bullish on the markets, except for the likelihood of a pull down from our uh, resistance before we head higher. That's it for now. I will keep you updated with any changes. Thank you and good night.